In this video, we provide the solution to question number 13 for practice exam number four for math 1210. We're given a function f of x, which is a polynomial, negative 4x cubed plus 7x minus 3. We're supposed to first explain why f satisfies the hypotheses of the mean value theorem on the interval 0 to 1. So let's just answer that question first. So the mean value theorem expects that on your closed interval, you're continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. So something like the following would be appropriate. Since f is differentiable, it's differential on its domain, which what is that domain? The domain is negative infinity to infinity. F is continuous on the interval zero to one. This is a closed interval and it's gonna be differentiable on the open interval zero to one. So first of all, if it's differentiable everywhere, then it'll be differentiable on some smaller interval, of course, but differentiability also implies continuity. So if it's differentiable everywhere, it's actually continuous everywhere, and therefore it's continuous on the closed interval zero to one. So that answers the first thing. So we should, we should then actually state that we've answered the first thing. So something like, so F satisfies the hypotheses of the mean value theorem, all right? So then what's the next thing that it says? Find any values, so find any values of C that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem for f of x on the interval zero to one. Um, if no such values exist, explain why not. Well, we've already said it satisfies the condition, so therefore such a point has to exist. Well, what points are guaranteed by the mean value theorem? So the mean value theorem is going to tell you that the derivative f prime at c is going to somewhere equal the average rate of change, delta y over delta x. That is dy over dx equals delta y over delta x for some value here. Which What is the average rate of change in this situation? We're going to get f of 1 minus f of 0 over one minus zero. Let's continue to compute this thing. If I plug one into my function, I'm gonna get negative four plus seven minus three, and I'm gonna subtract from that f of zero, which is gonna give you zero plus zero minus three, all over one minus zero, which is just one. So notice that the negative three will cancel out. Negative three minus negative three will cancel out. Those are just zeros, so those cancel out. So negative four plus seven is gonna be three over one, so I get three. So I, I get that somewhere the derivative is equal to three. But if I compute the derivative for the function, I'm going to get negative 12 c squared plus 7. So I have to solve for this equation right here, which if I subtract 7 from both sides, you get negative 12 c squared equals negative 4. Divide both sides by 12, you get c squared equals 1 over 3. 4 goes into 12 three times, of course. And then taking the square root, we get that c is equal to plus or minus one over the square root of three. Now, one over the square root of three, which is positive, will be in the interval zero to one, but the negative is not. That's to be outside the interval. So we can then conclude something like, since um, one over the square root of three is less than one, but greater than zero, we get that, we have that C is gonna be one over the square root of three. This was the value guaranteed by the mean value theorem. And this therefore answers the question presented.